Welcome to Lunchbox Sessions, bite-sized industrial training. Hello, this is Carl from LunchboxSessions.com. Let's have a look at a unique problem that can plague a single rod cylinder, especially when there is a meter out flow control on the flow that is leaving from the rod and port. Notice that our rod and port pressure is 4,000 psi. That's twice the value of our system relief valve. That value is very alarming. Could be the cause of cylinder damage or a blown rod and hydraulic hose. If only four gallons a minute are being allowed to leave the rod end port of the cylinder when it's extending, then only eight gallons per minute are being allowed in. This we know because we have a two to one surface area ratio on our piston, which also equates to a two to one volume for extend versus retract. So if only four gallons per minute are being allowed out as the cylinder extends, then only eight gallons per minute are being allowed in on the blind end port. Let's add flow meters to our hydraulic system and find out that our pump is displacing 10 gallons per minute. So not all of the pump's flow is allowed to enter the cylinder. That explains why our relief valve is already open. If our relief valve is already open, we know why we have a 2000 psi pressure reading on the blind port of our hydraulic system. Let's take that 2000 psi, multiply by 4 square inches on the back of our piston, and we find out that our cylinder, when extending, has the force capability of 8000 pounds. But our cylinder is doing no useful work. It is not moving a load. So our cylinder is not a pressure drop. Instead, our hydraulic cylinder becomes a pressure intensifier. Again, this is due to restricting flow as it leaves the rod and cylinder port. Since we are doing no useful work, we simply take the 2,000 psi, multiply by 4 square inches for our 8,000 pounds of force, but we find all of that potential energy is stored up as pressure on the rod side. Take our 8,000 pound shoving force, divide by 2 square inches, and we understand perfectly why we have a 4,000 psi pressure reading. What changes if our cylinder has some serious work to do? Let's add a load. 6,000 pounds divided by 4 square inches on the back of our piston means we should see a 1,500 psi pressure. But we don't. We see 2,000 psi because our relief valve is already open and we know that due to the flow control on the rod and port, not all of our pumps 10 gallons per minute are allowed to enter the cylinder. So 2,000 psi times 4 square inches is still an 8,000 pound shoving force. That's 2,000 pounds more force than is required to move our load. Take that 2,000 pounds of extra force, divide by 2 square inches, and we find out there's a perfectly logical reason for our 1,000 psi pressure on the rod and port. The 1,000 psi setting may not be alarming. That's a lower pressure setting than our system relief valve and is likely a very acceptable pressure level. Just keep in mind that whenever flow is restricted from the rod and port and there's no work for the cylinder to do, pressures can intensify and damage can occur. That's all for this time. Thanks for watching. We have hundreds of interactive resources like this live schematic so you can try out your wild ideas without blowing anything up. Get started at lunchboxsessions.com.